I, I'm guessing that there's not many Tories in this audience. I might be wrong, but that's my guess. And I sometimes think that Alex Salmond is a stuck record talking about the Tories. So I want you to remember something. I want you to remember the dark decades of the Thatcher idea. And I want you to remember how Thatcher came in. 1979, 35 years ago, a cold winter night when James Callaghan's government was getting stronger, the economy was getting stronger, the currency was getting stronger, the balance of payments was getting stronger, and Labour had a plan. I was a Labour organiser at the very time that if that government could only have survived until later that year or early the next year, a Labour government could have been re-elected under James Callaghan, who was one of the more popular prime ministers we ever had. I happen to think he was a fine man. I knew him well. What happened? The SNP tabled a vote of no confidence in the Labour government in 1979. The Tories, seeing it as a canary in the mine, realised that with the SNP's support, they could actually get Callaghan out in the winter of 1979. And so they tabled a motion of no confidence. And at 10 o'clock, staggering out of the House of Commons bars, because for the 11 SNP MPs, every night was Burns Night, believe me. <laughs> every night was Burns Night. Staggering out of the House of Commons bars, swaying in the non-existent breeze, they followed Margaret Thatcher into the division lobby to defeat the Labour government, provoke a general election which Thatcher won and then destroyed Scotland, destroyed industrial England, laid waste to the country, millions unemployed, from which we've never recovered. So the next time you hear Alex Salmon and the SNP talking about the Tories, remember who brought Margaret Thatcher to power here. I just had one, just one, one. one, one wee footnote to that, because they, they like to talk about oil, you know, and reports and things like that from the 70s. But, you know, when they did that in 1979, they did so in the full knowledge that the Tory manifesto, which was obviously going to be introduced as a result of her actions, included the abolition of the British National Oil Corporation. The state, so now, when they talk about Norway, the Norwegian oil model is based on Statoil, a state oil company. The British oil model under a Labour was based on the British National Oil Corporation. In 1979, the SNP voted with the Tories to bring down the Labour government in the certain knowledge that the British National Oil Corporation would be privatised, and at that point the whole structure of the North Sea industry changed. So beware the crocodile tears. They share the responsibility for ensuring that Britain went on a totally different path in the North Sea from Norway. Brilliant. And one last point then before we break, and Willie McKelvey can bear me out on this more than other than my mother or anyone alive today. And I'm saying this as somebody that was kicked out of the Labour Party. Yeah? They kicked me out of the Labour Party and abolished my constituency just in case. <laughs> Everything that's good that we've ever had we got through labor. Everything. Everything. Not everything that labor did was good. Some of the things labor did was bad. But everything that was good, we got through labor. Labor in the workplace, through the trade unions, labor in the town hall, or labor in government. I was born in a slum, 12A, Athol Street, in an attic the roof sloping so sharply that I couldn't, they couldn't fit a cot in the attic. I slept as a baby in a drawer in one room, an outside toilet shared 
I know you think it's funny, but it's true. Share, an outside toilet shared with five other families. The seat was always warm. <laughs> that slum was cleared by labor. We moved into a brand new council house given to us by labor. I had a school at the bottom of the road built by labor, a park at the top of the road built by labor. My father and Willie McKelvey worked in a factory, NCR, from Dayton, Ohio, sent to Dundee, ordered to Dundee by labor. I had a health center at the end of the road created by the labor invention, unique in the world at that time, of a national health service. I got free school milk. I got free orange juice, free cod liver oil, free malt to build me up. I'm going to need to stop taking that. <laughs> All of it from labor. If I'd been as clever as Brian, I would have gone to a free university and been given a grant to enjoy it with from labor. So, did any of that come from the SNP? The SNP opposed all of these things. In fact, long before there ever was oil, they wanted us to be independent. When Hitler, well, it's a fact, when Hitler was at the Channel ports, the leaders of the SNP were interned because they said it was England's war. They didn't give a damn about the unity of the working people. Now, the point I'm making is this. All these good things we got through labor, but they were only possible because we were a big nation of tens of millions. They wouldn't have been possible as a small country of five million. You need a critical mass of people in order to confront capital, in order to order companies where they must locate, in order to build a national health service and all the other good things that we've got. Don't throw it all away in September. That's what I'm here to say to you. We'll be back in 10 minutes. Thanks very much. <laughs>